by readers or out of the office file, often presenting department has to turn out six or 70 blocks a week for reproducing photographs onto newsprint. These are chosen by the editors, not only from the work of the series' own cameramen, but from a multitude of snaps and portraits sent in by readers, or dug up out of the office files, often presenting tricky problems of reproduction. Reporting what happened during the week is only half the paper's job. Buying and selling is a traditional Yorkshire occupation, and, like most newspapers, the Express allots over half its space to its advertisers. The advertising representative calls regularly on the city shopkeepers, inviting their orders and making suggestions for the layout of their advertisements. <laughs> One of the most popular of the Express features are the little announcements, the classified smalls, put in by private tradesmen and individuals, sewing machine for sale, fish and chip shop wanted, clean bed sitting room to let, articles lost and found, births, marriages and deaths, in memoriam and thanks for sympathy. All week they come in by post and telephone or across the counter in Little Westgate. Four o'clock on Friday is the deadline. Now the galleys have been fetched from the shelves, the type is lifted off and assembled into pages with the unhesitating sense of position of hands that have been fitting these columns into place every week for many years. The completed page is tightened, locked into its form, and finally leveled off. The form is lifted onto a mangle, the half-tone blocks are removed, and the page is again leveled off. A hand roller coats the surface of the type with ink, and a sheet of newsprint is laid across the form. The page goes under the mangle to produce the final proof, not for spelling and setting mistakes this time, so much as for positioning and general layout. When the page proof is okay, the page goes under the mangle again. The newsprint has now been replaced by a stiff papier-mâché mould. The seven-ton pressure of the mangle has given this the imprint of type and half-tone blocks, the fine reproduction in relief of the page on the floor. Blank spaces on the underside of the mould are strengthened by packing with paper felt, and it is placed in a casting box. The box is closed, and the pull of the lever floods into it, in direct contact with the mould, a charge of molten lead. The box is water-cooled. In less than 30 seconds, the box can be unlocked, and the lead casting, now carrying the impression of the page, lifted out. The mould is stripped away, and the casting goes in to the boring machine for trimming. Rough edges are trimmed off the casting by hand. As printing time approaches, the half-ton reels of paper, four and a half miles of paper on each, are rolled to the press room. Three at a time, these are threaded up on the rotary press. 
a machine which will run off 22,500 copies an hour of a 12-page paper, printed, folded, and counted. As the pages are completed, the castings are carried to the press room and positioned on the rotary. It's just over two and a half hours since the last small ads were handed in at the office. Now, as blocks of type, they're inserted into the last gap, and the front page, always the last to be made up, can be closed. The last mold and the last casting are made, and at 7 o'clock on Friday, the Wakefield Express goes to bed. Slowly, the paper crawls off the reels and through the press, powered at first by a 5 horsepower auxiliary motor. The paper crawls, ink flows, and the page castings turn against the white newsprint. Speed jumps up as the 25 horsepower motor takes over. Twenty-two and a half thousand copies an hour, counted and folded. The paper runs and the ink flows. As the press pounds away and the papers stream out, attention must all the time be paid to the quality of the printing. The margins and the inking kept all the time just so. By 10 o'clock, or earlier with luck, printing is finished. The paper is on its way out to show Wakefield its own fame. Thank <laughs> you.